Some businesses succeed, some don't. Then there are those that seem to have been around forever. The true entrepreneurial success story. How did they do it? What was their vision? What makes a success? In this special episode for Eye on Annapolis, we speak with the true success stories, those business owners that have been around for decades, learn from their successes and failures. Now, here's host John Fernay. It's blinding down here at Zachary's Jewelers. And <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the bling out of here whenever I walk into the store. I love it. Um, we're here with Steve Samaras, who is one of the owners or the owner or yep. the brains the or owner. the janitor. Or you're something here at something, Zachary's I mean, Jewelers. And chief this, cook and bottle washer, is that what they call yeah, it? You know, hey, you, you do what it takes. That's one of the things. I mean, as we continue our legacy business series, you are one of the staples of Annapolis. You have been here for years and years. Uh, you are the anchor on Main Street. Thank uh, you. Haven't always been that. You got sort of, a, I know you had a fire about 15 years ago that displaced you into your anchor spot, and it's been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I personally love about Zachary's is that you're not just here hawking, you know, hawking your jewelry, uh, that you really are part of the community. When they light the Christmas tree every year, okay, there is the Chesapeake Ballet that is out here doing the Nutcracker. You are constantly doing commun different community events, and you're not just a store that's open in Annapolis to take people's business. And I think that that really speaks well for your longe longevity and uh, certainly your future. But where, where did you start? How long have you been as Zachary's Jewelers? Oh, John, it's so, it's so hard to admit, but I personally have been on Main Street since 1979, uh, managing a former jewelry store. At the location where Starbucks is now. And okay. then in, in 1992, I took over. That business, the business I was managing prior, had gone fallen on hard times, let's say. And so I, I looked at uh, my, I call Errol my brother. He is the brother from a different mother for sure. Um, he's born and raised in Belize and moved to the United States in the 70s with his wife, has raised a family. I looked at him. He and I were in the store with no jewelry, no any of just the furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and realized that we didn't know anything other than jewelry. So we decided uh, let's put our heads together and try and put this thing back on its feet. And we opened Zachary's in '92. Just to speak briefly about him, he the commitment, and this this is part of the the fiber of of our business, um, the nucleus, I should say, of our business. It's it's all been built on family, and Errol being the primary point that I'm trying to make. He worked at the new Zachary's from 1992 for a period of 10 months without collecting a paycheck. And he drove from Washington to wow. Annapolis daily. And fortunately, his wife was a uh, career military. So she, <laughs> she there, there was, the so there was some income there. Oh yeah. A little bit of income there, but um, I mean, that's the commitment that that Errol has made to, uh, to me personally and to our business. Uh, and that's 37 years ago. No, sorry, sorry. 27 years ago. Are you are you native to Annapolis? I'm born and raised in Annapolis. Okay, right on Union Street in downtown. Okay, and your name is Stephen Samaras. Yes. And where is Zachary's coming from? Interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know any Zachary uh, in here. Well, you know the the former business that that I managed, as I uh, pointed out, uh, was named Alexander's. Um, and I had a professor at the University of Maryland, an advertising professor, that none of us could stand. The guy was just as arrogant as he could be. Once a week, it seemed, he would walk in and he would, he'd say, oh, for all of you young, budding entrepreneurs that think you can make it in business and think business is easy, the only advice I'm going to give you is when it comes to advertising, make sure you name your business and it begins with a letter A. Because <laughs> back then... <laughs> the yellow pages. That was that was right, the right, best right, right, right. A A A A A Jewelers for A Reynolds, right? <laughs> so uh, I remember that gentleman and went completely opposite. Went to the back of the alphabet. Z was there, and I, the first name I came up with was Zachary. <laughs> and, uh, so there's 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 no no great great grandfather Zachary um, in the. Well, actually, <laughs> there might I be. called my cousin George and and told him that you know I came up with a name and uh, told him it was Zachary. He says that's great. And I, he was very excited. Couldn't understand why. Well found out that his son drew his actually his first name is zachary and his middle name is andrew, andrew. they chose to call him drew instead so very, very cool. connection so, there. It's, it's funny you talk about the the z i know when i graduated high school we had to march about a mile from uh, the campus to a church where they had a service and we were led by bagpipers which i really can't stand <laughs> 
And being the last name Fernay, I was very happy that I was in the middle of the alphabet. I would have killed myself if I had been named like Anderson, <laughs> but I would have given my left leg to have been called like Zimmerman. <laughs> I mean, a mile of the oh, same yeah. bagpipe going, it just oh, drove, yeah. drove me crazy. But so this is back in the 70s that you would, um, I mean, that, that yeah, I started buying gold and silver back in 1979. Wow. And then that transformed into uh, the owner of the company acquisitioned, purchased a, a manufacturing jewelry out, a jeweler out of Laurel and brought that concept to downtown Annapolis. And it ran well for a period of time. And then uh, we ventured into the continent of Africa to uh, attempt a diamond on mine. Yeah. And I spent uh, 14 separate trips there over the course of four years. A lot of money expended, and that's what that's why he fell on hard times. He just uh, couldn't make a go of that. Not sustainable. No. And, okay, so Zachary's was where Starbucks is. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't buy a diamond in Starbucks anymore. Uh, I'm, tr- I'm working on that. But a uh, uh, <laughs> little, little satellite They're selling stir. everything else. Oh, little, yeah, it's true. <laughs> a little satellite stir. I'll take a latte and a, <laughs> a oh. latte and a diamond. Um, and, but then you you did have this fire. Let's uh, Well, let's talk about the history of where – and I know you've got a store up in Severna Park as yes. well. Yes. And was that before or after the fire? It was after, after the, fire. the fire. Fire was in 2005. It okay. was November 25th. So literally, Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. It was the it was the day after Thanksgiving. Fortunately for the city in downtown Annapolis, it didn't happen on Thanksgiving Day. We were open when the fire began that evening and uh, it actually began in the property next to us and seeped in behind the walls. We were only about 6 inches away from that building. And unbeknownst to Errol, again, who was working that evening, it, it started on, the, it seeped in behind the wall and shot up to the third floor. And that's the floor that caught on fire and, and obviously moved downward. But that was actually the, I was out with family that night because my father had passed away uh, 10 days earlier. And uh, we were out for a little dinner for relatives that were in from out of town. And I received a phone call and obviously came downtown and saw what was going on. But how did How did you get here? In the corner store of you now, Zachary's is at 100 Main Street, which is, that's right, 100? 100 Main Street. Um, right here at the foot of Main Street, you're underneath Buddy's Crabs and Ribs next mm-hmm. to the Sperry store, I believe, is your immediate neighbor on Market Space. And Buddy's Crabs and Ribs would be on Main Street. Yes. Uh, great wraparound windows. We call it the uh, corner of Hollywood and Vine. Okay. For Annapolis. <laughs> it, uh, it's interesting. We were... That night, it was about 2 a.m., and by 2 a.m. Uh, on the 25th, or actually the 26th now, I had probably received three or four phone calls uh, offering properties for us to locate temporarily. And uh, Were they local people? Yes. And again, uh, just point that out. This is this is a community working together for the community. This is, you know, hey, this is a local small business. We need to make sure that we can do what we can do to help them out. Well, you know, interesting, John, and not to say you know, it's a perfect segue, but I made a commitment uh, as we started the business in 92 to support every charity that came through the doors, local charity. We had to what about the John Frenet Send the Kids to College charity? That, that's, that's one of them. I think. <laughs> no, we, but, you know, whether it was a $25 gift certificate donation or uh, supporting, you know, one of the larger local community uh uh, organizations. I was the MC for the uh, for the hospice, hospice gala, and it was. Let me tell you something, John. I, my wife is on the committee. Was on the is all has been on the committee now for years. And uh, Dr. Berman, Lou Berman, has been the host and and auctioneer for a number of years for the gala, uh, the hospice gala. This year, unfortunately, he was either out of town or I don't recall why he couldn't do it. So my wife decides to volunteer me, unbeknownst to myself, of course. <laughs> And she comes to me and with the idea, and I said, there's no way. I said, first of all, I don't like to speak in front of crowds. And she said, you know, you'd be great at it. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. Well, Chris Wilson uh, with hospice came by, and she put the strong arm on me, and uh, I agreed to do it. And I promised my wife that you're going to pay for this. I had kept my promise because the week before the event, I would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and start reciting part of <laughs> my opening <laughs> comments, and it went very well. I enjoyed it. We raised uh, $650,000. Yeah, it was, it was it, just shy of six fifty. I remember yeah. it was a record for the for the hospice. Yeah, it was, it was a great evening, great evening. So that, Hospice is a wonderful organization. It really so. are. There are a few like it. We never said no, and 
never realized the impact that that had on the community until 2005, November 2005. We had over 75 charities come to the store supporting us with either food. We rebuilt in, in one week. We were open on the corner in one week after wow. the fire. Never missed a beat during the holidays and had our most successful holiday ever. In a, in a fire like that, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming there was insurance and stuff like that. But, I mean, does diamonds, I'm assuming, don't burn. But, I mean, what's do they, do they get lost? Or they get, they, I mean, they're in the, I'm, I'm assuming they're in safes and stuff like that, too, some of them. We had, fortunately, the, you know, the diamond inventory was secure in the, in the vault, as was the, were the customer's jewelry that we repaired. Um, what was exposed to the caustic effect that smoke can have uh, on metal okay. was the balance of the jewelry in the showcases. So we had 1,100 items, I think, that so were lost. So we're doing watches and rings everything. and, and, and anything everything that had that Anything that was exposed, we got rid of. Open in a week, though? Open in a week. We, uh, we sat across. Were you open here? Open here. You just placed a T-shirt shop, didn't you? Harvey, yeah, Harvey had a, he was, it was an owner occupied property at the time. Banana Republic had uh, vacated the property, I think about a year, year and a half earlier. And Harvey came to me that night and said, uh, let's talk about the corner. And I, my, I remember vividly my response, Harvey, I can't afford the corner. And he said, you'd be surprised what you can afford. So that's, uh, that was our first communication. Uh, we spoke the next day. I spoke with the staff. We gathered in, and believe it or not, the, the back of the cigar shop, the Annapolis Cigar Shop. And um, we had sent out a week or so earlier an invitation to our holiday party, which was to, which was to happen on December 2nd, that fr- the Friday after the mm-hmm. fire. And uh, asked, the, I said, listen, we have insurance. You guys are going to be taken care of. You know, don't worry about that. We can We can choose to take our time and open or we can do something that many people believe is impossible and open before the holidays. And everyone agreed uh, unanimously that uh, we would attempt to do that. And we had the date of December 2nd. That was our holiday party. Let's see if we can do it by then. But the invitations were printed, Steve. They were printed. (laughs) And we had 152 items, I recall, on the list, the checklist to get done before we could open. And we accomplished all but 12. Um, It was, And that's where the community support came in, buying showcases. I mean, I never never went into that. I had... People, friends that ran right. out and bought those and brought them in. Wow. So it was a uh, Herculean, you know. Well, it's look, look, look where you are now. Now, now you came here, you, you expanded up into Severna Park as yeah. well. And that was, uh, you said, after the fire. And that's, that's located right on Ritchie Highway. And yes. it's in the former Frank's Nursery. And that's probably really dating myself there. I believe it's Frank's Nursery thing. But Homestead Gardens is on one side. Yes. And you guys are on the other. But right on Ritchie Highway, just north of... Um, like the Bill Bateman's Shopping Center, yes. the Old Navy, I think, is still up think there. And Macy's Corner, I think, is the name of Is the, that Macy's uh, Corner? Macy's Exxon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that was just a natural growth because of the business that – or were you looking to get into the – Well, that's interesting. You know, that was right at the peak of the recession, 2010. There is a, there's a group. It's our policing uh, credit bureau, if you will, within our industry called the Jewelers Board of Trade. Uh, we opened a store in November 2010. I received a phone call, and typically you don't want to get a phone call from the JBT because it's something that has to do with <laughs> your credit. And uh, you I know, am, but I'm with the IRS. I'm yeah. here. I'm here to help. So I, I took the phone call, and I had this woman on the other line uh, calling me and congratulating me. And I said, "For what?" And she said, uh, "Didn't you just recently open a store in Savannah Park, Maryland?" And I said, "Yes, of course." And she said, "Do you know how many stores have opened this year?" And it's November. I said, no, how many? And she said, you're the fourth. There were four jewelry stores that opened in, in 2010. Uh, nationwide. Nationwide. And we happened to be one of them. Um, so, you know, we, we had an opportunity there. Don Riddle was a very dear friend of mine and, and posed the, uh, the opportunity for us. We had, oh, I feel like I'm boasting a little bit here, but it, well worth a comment. In 2008, this is, excuse me, 2007, Two years after the fire, we decided to do a major renovation to the interior of our property here on Main Street. With that, in 2008, we were identified by our industry's number one magazine publication to be the coolest store in America. And we were featured on the cover. I mean, it was great. Nice. But that sort of bridged the time and the gap. I mean, we were very, very a popular business, um, not only locally, but regionally because of that recognition. 
And our poorest year, I think, was about 9% off of our best year uh, during the recession. So we had, again, that opportunity to open at Severna Park in 2010, and we, we jumped at it. And now you're here, you've got two bustling stores yeah, and uh, a booming online business. I mean, you've moved on to the online world, which obviously you have to sort of uh, migrate with the with the whims of the consumer. It's, you know, we, we've, it's interesting. Technology has had an effect on virtually every facet of retail that exists. Uh, and we recognize that, you know, the tide was coming or changing. And um, fortunately with our, where we position ourselves in, in the industry as a so-called guild type of store or upper end, people still want to feel and touch and, and know the people that they're buying from. So locally, we, we haven't experienced uh, a downturn in business, much like other jewelers have. Uh, but still, uh, the tide has changed, and, and that recognition has made us put into place certain things that may be unusual for, for the jewelry business. Well, I will, I will say that you mentioned about people want to build a relationship and, and work with people that they know. And I mean, I, I bought uh, a couple of things from, from you guys, and... Uh, I'll admit it. I mean, I'm Googling, trying to figure out, okay, what do we get for Christmas? You know, what, you know, yeah, what is that? Oh, sure. That's an idea. That's an idea. You know, when you're, when you're looking at a, a major purchase and major can be different for everybody. I mean, you know, that could be a, uh, you know, a, a $250 something or other, or it could be a $250,000 something, which a rumor has it that you had a, one of those $250,000 diamonds here over the Christmas season or something like that. But, yeah. um, you, you want to be able to touch it, see it, feel it. And look at the person in the eye and, and, and realize that you've got that relationship and you've got, you know, you've got somebody that's on your side to do it. And, and that's one of the things that I do appreciate uh, about Zachary's that, I, I mean, I turn around, I, maybe I did get my ideas online a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I came here and, and I remember working with Evangeline. And I was like, hey, my, yeah. you know, my girlfriend's this bracelet and she's not real flashy and not this and that. And it, it was like, okay. And we, and we worked through it and it was it, it worked out really well. And that's. You know, that's the one thing that you're never going to get online is the uh, the realness that you've got here. And one thing I will say is, that, I mean, you mentioned Errol is one of your or, or your longest serving employee. Yeah. And but you know, your, your turnover here is not much. I mean, you're not hiring people that are in and out. And everybody is so knowledgeable about what's what's going on, um, which is just that's, that's you know, that that comes from, I guess, from uh, Errol and myself. I've. Over the years, I've hired my sister Evangeline to literally run uh, what we have down here in Annapolis as the sales manager. Um, I hired hired my sister Daphne to to run the Serena Park store. We have Erica and Doug, who've been with Erica, has been with us twenty years. Doug has been with us fifteen years. It, longevity is the name of the game here. We've also I'm bringing in um, new blood. Um, I have literally, well claimed that she's my adopted uh, Samoan okay. daughter. Uh, Constance is moving back from the West Coast soon to become our COO. Hasn't been announced yet. This is the first time anyone's heard okay. that. But she uh, she is the future uh, of this store. And But first and foremost, she had to pass the family test. And uh, she fit in there better than anyone else that I've, I've, you know, I've known. She's just a remarkable person. Um, when she takes, she's the bridge again, she bridges the gap of generations. Uh, she's between the old folks like us, between the the old folks like us and like us. And, you know, recognizing that having been here, you you know, you could do the math 40 years. We're getting to the end of this, uh, this particular facet, I guess, and not to pun, not to offer a pun, but, uh, facet of the business in my life and, and the transition to the next generation is coming through her. She is, she is taking that technology that she understands and is a, an expert at, I might add, and translated that into how it overlays with what we've existed here as a, a relationship building business in the community uh, through Omnichannel. So you know, you, you need the multiple points of contact with your clients today to be successful and to maintain that success that we've talked about, the change of, of retail. Sure. 
Um, we have a handheld presence. We have, you know, we have the website that's uh, operational and, and doing wonderfully. Um, your magazine is beautiful. We have a magazine. This is our fifth year uh, with a magazine, which, again, shows our roots in the community um, it, because it's about all of our members. It's not. Now, I want to talk about the magazine real yeah, quick. Sure. This is not, and I know a lot of jewelry store organi- organizations, but uh, organizations like a trade journal, trade organization, might give you a shell of a magazine. Okay, hey, here's the. Uh, Art carved. Right. Here's the here's the art carved right. ad for the high school rings, and here's whatever it may be. Uh, that's not what you're doing. Oh, this is this is a fully produced Zachary's project product. My sister Evangeline has, uh, uh, with the guidance of our ad agency, has has um, taken this project on herself, and it's become her her pet, if you will. And and she focuses on um, the content being uh, personal. Um, the models that are used in the magazine are all ours. I mean, they're employees of the store, staff members of the store, and um, it's taken on a life of its own. It's it's become a catalyst to to show who we are, not sell jewelry. But because it it, it you know you're when you look at the magazine and you read these personal uh, stories about uh, people involved, you become you're immersed in in what we are and what we mean to our clients and what they mean to us. So it's, it becomes a vehicle with which to sell jewelry because sure. it, it, it it hits it personally. It's, well, it does. It brings people into the stories sure. of Zachary and brings Zachary's into their own personal story there. And, and you've, more, you've morphed. I know I, I noticed when I came in this morning, you have a, uh, a new, we'll call it a selfie station or whatnot with a green screen. Oh, yeah. That's, that's set up again. And, you know, you're, you're not attracting the 90-year-old women that were and men that were shopping in your store 30 years ago with that. And that just sort of shows what you've been doing with as you're evolving. Uh, it's, yeah, that. we understand. And I don't know that's to be true, but when the selfie station went live, um, we believe we're the first jewelry store in the country to have one. Which is cool. And basically what it, what it is, it's a, it's just a fun thing. You can select a couple different backgrounds. You can wear some jewelry if you can mm-hmm. try it on to see what that necklace or ring or watch or whatever it may be looks like and have it texted right to you immediately. Yes. Yourself and... Um, and sent down on any form of social media that you wish to, to uh, populate it with. So, uh, Which is really kind of a cool and fun thing. Oh, you should uh, see the staff. I mean, <laughs> we're I, over there I, every I think, I think you might have some fun around Christmas and Halloween I with think that. so. <laughs> I think so. That's <laughs> and, and, and again, I want to talk. I mean, I was recently at the Denim and Diamonds thing, and you, know, you couldn't take two steps without seeing Zachary's Jewelers as far as donating something to be auctioned off or to the silent auction. And you had mentioned that you had been there, and I, I love the story of way back when in the in the old, good old days when we had parking meters that actually took quarters, oh, yeah. uh, where you would send people up uh, in the in the season, send people up and look for expired meters and throw a quarter in and say, hey, you know, we, we covered you for 20 minutes or what. Yeah, back then it was 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, what, what, whatever it was. But again, that's, you know, it's all about being part of the community. And Annapolis is not a very large town. Uh, some people like to think it's this big metropolis, but it's really not. It's a very small town. It's a very uh, familial town. You know, we are we are all together living here trying to you know be you know be one community which and, and you've really done a lot to keep the glue to a degree to keep it going yeah, yes uh, I appreciate the, the compliment because that certainly is uh, what it is and, and um, I think at the heart of, of it all it's about doing uh, you know good deeds is good business you know you mentioned that the walking up and down the street that we we would do Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays during the summer months. We re- I can't tell you how many clients, new clients we had because of that. We put the little the little note that appeared yeah. to be a parking ticket on the right. windshield when they came by to see that it was a thank you from for shopping downtown and from us. There's a gentleman from Washington D.C. that has a boat down here that has is probably one of my or well, not probably his definitely one of my top 10 clients now. This guy spends tens of thousands of dollars a year with us and it costs you a quarter it cost to acquire me a quarter <laughs> cost me a quarter so. not a not a bad roi no that was That's, that was worth it all that that is for sure what's the future look like for you guys um three more stores very possibly we have um okay, i was just joking but no no, no we, we've uh we're um looking let's say that okay um, uh maybe a, a slightly different model it will be a slightly different model it's uh in the general area, or are you looking at general area of the region, not not downtown Annapolis, certainly not, right. uh, uh, but 
in the surrounding communities. So, I mean, in the Maryland area. Yes. I mean, you're not you're not looking at Minot, North Dakota, or anything like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, and um, you know, you'll hear something about it hopefully shortly. Okay, this is called being coy. Uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is what this. I, I see. I see what's happening here. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, Steve Samarison, and, and yeah, you know, this is a family-owned business. This is a uh, just a wonderful place to be. If you're down here in Annapolis, I do encourage you to stop in. Just check out everything that they do have. More importantly, check out the people that they do have here that are working for them, because I think that's it is the biggest asset that you no have. Question. You know, the most expensive asset is probably what you keep in the safe, but that's you know, that's a totally different different ball of wax. But then if you're ever down in Annapolis on any one of the special days, turn around, uh, you know, watch the lighting of the Christmas tree and watch the Nutcracker performed out front. Uh, I'm assuming that you're going to be continuing to do that on, uh, you know, as for the foreseeable future. Yes, we will. You look at the windows. The windows are always a, a cool display. I mean, you've got... You know, up in the New York windows, at the Macy's windows were always a big thing to look at, or Saks Fifth Avenue. It's sort of our own little answer here. You say you've got Hollywood and Vine down here on the corner, and it's a little bit of a New York as well uh, because the displays do change. Uh, you are one of the jewelers in town that has you know, been around for, for quite a long time, and um, you've stood the test of time, if you will, and I think you've, it, it sort of speaks to um, what you do. Personally, you've been involved with the Downtown Annapolis Partnership, the Annapolis Business Association that was before. Probably uh, you were on the board of the, it was probably called the Convention of Visitors Bureau at one yes. point, and now visit Chamber Annapolis. Chamber of Commerce, sure. Um, and that's uh, inv- invaluable to what you've done to build the business. Would you ever do it again differently? Would you? Oh, boy, that's... I mean, there's, there's obviously there's things you would have done differently, sure. but do you appreciate being... You know, I, John, I, just to put it this way, I, I love what I do. That's why they'll carry me out of the store. Um, you know, do... Sales uh, will be a little bit off that day, though. A little but, bit off. <laughs> I mean, the fact that... I mean, the reason I'm... I want this to continue, and I want it to continue down, downtown. I want to grow this business, and... You know, at my age now, growth is um, without the assistance of youth is not sustainable. So that's why I've, I've looked to to others to help continue the, the the legacy, if you will, that we've created down here, and, and that's um, uh, that's important to me. I think it's a really smart smart move. Well, who knows what the future is going to hold? Who knows? Who but knows? check it out, Zachary's down at the foot of Main Street at. Uh, Hollywood and Vine, but it's otherwise known as Main and Market Space uh, in Annapolis. You can find them online at Zachary'sJewelers.com and Z A C H A R Y S Jewelers. You can figure out how to spell that. dot com. That'll give you a taste of what's in the store, but really uh, to experience the experience of working with folks like Errol or Evangeline or Steve or any of the other great people you got working here, uh, do come in here. Shally or uh, Daphne up in Severna Park. Definitely give them a visit. And, you know, thank you for being such a piece of the community for so long. Well, uh, thank you. And uh, thank you, Annapolis. Thanks for listening to this special podcast for I Am Annapolis. Please be sure to visit IamAnnapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinions. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the I Am Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you your local news direct to your phone or tablet every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Subscribe on iTunes or Google Play.